Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use Google Colab because for those of you having trouble using a GPU at home, Google Colab gives you access to a GPU for free. And it turns out it's pretty fast. The main constraint being you only get one CPU, but the GPU seems to have a lot of RAM or the RAM is shared somehow. I don't know, but you can put really large models in its RAM. So let's get going. Uh, the easiest way to start this is to uh, basically make it so you can run this model uh, in smaller increments because about every two hours or so the environment resets. I, Google set this up so that it's it's for it's for learning. It's not for you know using as your main training environment, right? Uh, if you want to use Google stuff, you can pay for it for longer, but this is still really very powerful. Uh, we're going to loop maybe every 5,000 time steps, stop, and save the model. Uh, specifically, we're going to save our model to Google Drive because otherwise you might lose it when it resets. So the easiest way to do that is to run this uh, command here. If you guys have never used a Jupyter Notebook before, that's what you're looking at right now. So Jupyter Notebooks are kind of interactive Python environments uh, where you can see all of the output uh, saved. It's extremely handy for learning from. I actually should start using them for my tutorials. Um, the Google Colab, if you start it and you go new, new Python Notebook 3, you end up with this right here, what you're looking at. Uh, it gives you a bunch of code snippets of extremely useful stuff. That's where I got this code from. And it'll show you the file. It's effectively a, oh, it's connecting. It's effectively a Linux environment. So it's really straightforward if you know how to use Linux. The entire root is right here. And uh, the content that we were just looking at there, it's right there, sample data. Uh, they give you a bunch of stuff you can mess with if you don't already have something you want to do, but we're going to show you how to do train Sonic using PPO2. Okay, here we go. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to mount your Google Drive. Uh, it gives you this link here, which you need to follow to um, get your authorizations code to link it together. So we're going to do that. You're going to want to, it, I'm going to do it off screen because I don't, you know, just for security reasons. You log into your account, you allow the account to access your Google Drive, and it gives you a code which you copy and paste in here. Then you hit enter, it takes a second, and it will validate your Google Drive account. The reason you're using Google Drive is because it doesn't get reset when the environment resets. So that's now, let's refresh this. It's now mounted right here, okay? So we actually have access to my Google Drive right here. So my drive, uh, we're going to use, I've already uploaded the ROMs for Sonic. These are the ROMs you get when you buy the Steam package. They're named differently, but if you buy Sonic on Steam, you'll get the ROMs. You can grab them out of the, uh, the installation folder and upload them to your Google Drive. Okay, that's necessary for this tutorial, so do that. Okay, the way uh, Jupyter Notebooks work is you just add these code cells and then you can run them independent of each other. This could be helpful. Uh, separately, it is a Python environment, so to... Whoops, somebody's calling me. Yellow! Hey! Uh, no, I'm pretty good. It's in the candy section. Well, if you're getting chocolate, get me chips. Delicious chips. Um, yeah, or just whatever, whatever you think would be nice, because I'm sure you're gonna dive in too. So. Uh, yeah, okay, that's okay. I don't really like. I don't like the pretzels though. No, I don't want munchies. I'll have. I'll either get Doritos or ketchup chips. Yeah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so that's my fiance. She's buying me chips. Okay, so to access, as I was saying, this is an active Python environment. So to run commands outside of the Python environment, they give you this exclamation mark. So, for example, we're gonna we're gonna check Lisp, our, our pip, to see what's already installed. And the insanely cool thing 
about Google Colab is they've already pre-installed all these packages for you. Look at them all! Uh, and the best of all, absolute best of all, is there's Keras, which I recommend you use. Uh, I think PyTorch is in here somewhere? Maybe not. PyTorch is the competition, so I'm not surprised. But stable baselines, that's what we're going to use to get PPO. And freaking TensorFlow! And this TensorFlow, I think, utilizes the um, GPU. So it's extremely quick one way or the other. So yeah, we're not going to run that though. So this here cleans it. We're going to instead install Jim Retro because that's not installed. So you just you run that right there and it'll run in the background. We're going to add another thing so we can hop ahead while it's installing in the background. Um, we need to copy, we need to import our ROMs. So the way to do that is to use exclamation mark because we're going to run a Python independent of the Python environment, which is kind of hilarious if you think about it. And we're going to run retro.import and we're going to point it to the folder there, my drive sonic. So that's going to be G drive my autocomplete works. It's incredible. <laughs> sonic. Can I work? No, it's not going to work. And click import. So there you go. It found the ROMs for us. Okay. Next, we are going to. So those are installed, and if you just like they would be installed on your your normal computer, so we have access to them with uh, with the gym environment, with the retro environment. So one of the things that I found with uh, Google Colab, because you only have the single CPU access to the single CPU, you can't use sub proc vec env. So we can't do the like four environments at a time stuff. If somebody disagrees with that and understands why. Uh, let me know. I personally have the most success with just using the dummy. Oh, we haven't imported our stuff yet. We need to import our, we need to import retro. And then uh, we can go to the old, the old projects and just copy in. Boom. Stable baselines and all that stuff. We should run that. Should work. So we've got subproc vecenv and dub, uh, dummy vecenv. I'm going to use the dummy vecenv because I had problems using subproc vecenv. I'm not convinced you can't use it, but I haven't been able to use it. So it's fine. We'll just, we'll just do one. It's still really, really quick. It's quicker than my home GPU, which is kind of tragic. Uh, also doesn't heat up my house because it runs on Google servers. So dummy vecenv. Uh, we're going to run lambda. I spell lambda. Lambda retro dot make. Same old stuff as always. So Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. And the state name will be uh, Green Hill Zone Act One. I don't know how many times I've typed that in now. And we're gonna turn on recording. And we're gonna record to G Drive My Drive My Drive Sonic. So we're gonna record to. Uh, this folder right here. That's going to put the PK2 files into our into that folder, which will, you know, we can watch our training if we want. We're also going to use it at the end to generate the final video. Uh, because unfortunately, as far as I know, you can't actually run um, video on Google Colab. So you need to convert it into MP4 files and then you can watch it on my drive or whatever. I'll show you. So there you go, I just ran it. Uh, now this environment exists, so we're going to add a new cell. And we're going to start with our training. It's really not so bad. We're going to call the model... Come here. We'll call it Sanic PPO. Okay. Uh, and we will do a PPO2 model. We'll use the CNN policy, which we imported right there. Okay. So this is the one we're going to use. Uh, we're going to use the environment we just made. We're going to set the number of steps to 248. And we're going to turn verbose equals 1. Uh, you can mess with the mini batches and the number of steps. You can crank them pretty high. I actually haven't found the limit yet. So, you know, go for it. I, I, again, this is the advantage of using this over your own computer. If you, you have a lot of RAM for some reason. Who knows if this will last? I mean, Google could take this away at any point in time, right? What am I doing? We want to do model.learn and we'll do total 
times steps equals, for now we're just gonna do 10,000, okay? Because we I'm just gonna show you how to do this, but you're really gonna wanna do 500,000. I think I was able to train 500,000 or a million, possibly two million before the environment reset on me. So you can play around with it. Just make sure, you know, you put like a for loop and do like uh, I in range 10, and then every, uh, every loop have model.save in there, so it saves it to your uh, Google Drive. So you don't lose it if the environment resets on you while you're not paying attention. Well, let's run this. And I've made a mistake. And steps. So maybe I was supposed to do this. Yeah. That's what I should have done. Sonic is awesome. appears to be dead. Okay, I found the problem. I'm I'm a dumb. You want to make sure that this this is here. I think I already had that. I don't know. So we're going to put one at the front and one at the end. Why not? See how it goes. Let's restart this whole cell and run everything again. Uh, so it's going to remount that. It's already mounted. It's going to install Jim Retro, which takes a second, unfortunately. It's going to import the games for us. It's going to load those, load the environment, and it's going to start training. Hopefully, very hopefully, it will now save to the correct folder. There they are! Yay! BK2 files! So yeah, you just got to make sure you got your... Oh, I also changed this here to Sonic plus model name. So it's going to put the model name once it's finished training in the folder. Okay. So we're going to let it train. And when it's done, we're going to take the BK2 file that it's created and we're going to make a video out of it. We can start typing that up now, actually. So while this is running in the background, we'll type up the next cell. Um, so we're going to, just like normal, we're going to run our environment and reset. So this will start it back at the start. Uh, done equals false, because we're going to use that. And reward equals zero. This is not important unless you want to track the reward. My, while not done, actions equal model dot predict so we're going to use the iron model that we just trained to predict the actions of the uh, environment of what the environment looks like obs reward done info those are all the standard variables and dot step we're going to submit it the actions which is what we just got out of the model uh, we're going to why not we'll record the we'll, we'll add up the reward just for fun and we will print reward okay um, let's print it at the end so it doesn't print a thousand times okay <laughs> let's run this this is going to generate so we've already got what do we are we already got zero and one and they were at 607 so we got to make sure whichever one we run now is the one we convert into a video in a sec So in the background right now, Sonic is playing. You can set it up like you can print the state, like uh, info if you want, or the, s the info will have the frames and uh, what all of the, the variables you're tracking are. Sonic's gonna run right now until he dies. So either the timer will run out or uh, he'll hit a, an enemy or he'll pass the level. I can't remember what the default settings are in the scenario file. If you guys want to know how to set those up, you gotta watch the other videos. The best scenario file setup video is definitely the original Sonic video. Okay. Let's go, Sonic. If you don't want to wait for him to die, you can set a for loop and go through the number of steps that you want. As much as you want. Uh, he tends to just die pretty quick. I guess our model <laughs> wasn't very good. Or extremely good. 
probably not very good. 611, that looks like our guy. Uh, okay, so we'll let that run and we'll do the final command. The final thing you need to do to convert a BK2 file into a video is, let me just copy paste this because it's really long. Uh, you're going to, this is for Tetris, you're going to run, you're going to do exclamation mark Python and then you're going to do this huge long path to your retro scripts and then there's in scripts folder, there's a file called movie playback.py, and you pass that a BK2 file, and it'll convert it into an MP4 file for you, which you can watch. So for us, we're going to be looking in Sonic, and then what do we got? Let's just do this one uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Complete. Auto complete. Okay. Oh. It's done. We got no points. We can go, we can navigate to it here. Uh, if you want, so G drive, my drive, Sonic, and then we can take one of these two guys. We'll pick number one, why not? Copy path, paste it there, and run this file. And if you run this file, it's going to generate a MP4 file. It did not, what is the problem? <laughs> Uh, oh, if you got to be careful when you copy paste from Google Drive, it doesn't put the uh, doesn't put the forward slash in there, and that's necessary. Nope. Okay. And you either got to use quotations or escape characters. So it's <laughs> a good lesson on how to do it poorly. There you go. Now it's running. So when this is done. Uh, we will have an mp4 file that we can watch. Hopefully it only takes a second. Okay, it's done! So, once it's finished uh, generating the mp4, it'll end like this. You can go into your uh, Google Drive, and there's the video right there. You can watch it here if you want. It's going, it's going to play twice now, so apologies for the double audio, everyone. But there you go, that's your trained Sonic. Too loud, Sonic. Jumping around. Uh, you want to use more than 10,000 though, so he does more stuff instead of the stupid stuff that he's currently doing. Okay, everyone! Enjoy!